Because you know why? Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary. Okay, it does feel right. And we have, it's so much better when we record in person because press that little button and then we're off we go and uh-huh. we're rolling. And we even have a little <laughs> a little video going. Uh, for, first time since episode one. You know what? In person. And it feels very right to do it like this. Uh, I feel like you and I should should potentially have a podcast studio where we record all of them in person. Um, I don't know if you can move to Hawaii. Uh, that would be tough. Okay. You're going to have to talk to Prof. <laughs> You're going to have to talk to Prof on that one. But I, I like being near you, Robert. I so, like it too. It yeah, feels right. It does. It does. It certainly does. So big, big episode. <laughs> big episode today. We're leading up to Major League Pickleball. We've got, we've got a lot of... Uh, Interesting stuff from this past weekend with mm-hmm. with Lobgate with uh, Karen Waters. <laughs> <laughs> you like you like that? Drop that early. Oh on. my! You like that's just here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we well, where, where do we start? I I don't see well, how. Let's just talk about where we are. Okay. Yes. No. We are in uh, just outside of Dayton, Ohio, Dayton, in Ohio. a gosh darn compound. Yeah, this is a compound. Yeah, in I a mean, state. It's got to be. Freaking fifteen thousand square feet. They got a yeah. they got a giant barn with two courts, uh, hosted uh, by Jessica and Mike Betancourt uh, for these few days before MLP to get get some touches in. I absolutely need them. I know you do as well. Yes. So uh, happy to be here for sure. Important to touch balls before you play. Yes, no doubt. And yeah, stay in the bet courts. Lovely people. Been an amazing host. We there's a tunnel from this room that we're sitting in. A tunnel underground. That leads to a gigantic barn that has two pickleball courts. How cool is that? Yeah, it's it's tunnels it's, are fun. It's what I want, and I'm, in your compound, and I'm very far from getting it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 really what I want, Rob. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, why you you don't need to leave a place like I don't like I I have a small bubble. You, yeah, I would rather my bubble just be my house and my compound, and so maybe we'll get there one day. I believe in it. You hear that, Prof? Compound. Yeah. Work harder, prof. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Thank you. I, I thought you'd appreciate it. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, Rob, I don't see how we don't. Uh, I mean, we obviously have that MLP, MLP preview, but how, how do yeah. we not talk about Kim Kleisters and Tom Brady, who are just yeah. another couple big names joining that, uh, that MLP family of ownership? Uh, just crazy, crazy big time uh, athletes. I mean, I honestly yeah. can't think of, of two. Uh, more more popular players in the sports world to uh, to jump uh, on that ownership uh, yeah. part of MLP, so it's super exciting. It's wild, <laughs> you know. They, you know, I, I know Brooks was talking about like, oh, you know, we're not going to have any announcements like, you know, the size of LeBron. But dude, I think Tom Brady's just damn near about equivalent to yeah, LeBron. I, you know? I, yeah, I don't, I don't see how, and you know, no. No chump whatsoever in the racket sport world. Kim Kleisters, uh, <laughs> yeah. for, former number one, six major titles, uh, number one in singles and in doubles. Uh, which is unheard of. In right, tennis. exactly, exactly. So four, four major yeah. titles on the singles, two major titles on the doubles. So just a phenomenal athlete in her own right. So it's, it's, it's just it's crazy. Yeah. It literally is crazy. And I think when, you know, a big topic nowadays is kind of a tennis versus pickleball world, right? So to have... To have a former number one in the world tennis player, um, especially on the women's side, which is really cool to have, you know, a female-led ownership um, is awesome. But to, to legitimate, legitimize pickleball through tennis um, is, is important. I mean, the... I mean, it's just as that person who maybe has a little pushback with it or is that, you know, that, that tennis purist... When when you hear these names, you can't you can't ignore it. We're talking John Isner, Kim Kleister. We're yeah. we're talking uh, big time names in the Sam sport. Query Sam now. Query. Uh, you got a former uh, Noah Rubin, a former uh, junior Wimbledon champion, yep. uh, saying that he's he's gonna uh, end his tennis career and go for pickleball. I mean, this is real stuff. You have to take notice, uh, whether it, uh, you have not wanted to uh, previously. You, yeah. you have to. You have to. Yep. It's it's changing fast too. This, this stuff's happening quick. I mean, coming into the sport. For me, basically in 2020, from what it was then, basically when both the APP and the PPA were just starting in beginning of 2020, to what it is now is wild. Yeah, no, it it really is. And if you, yeah, if you really think about it, kind of with that broad scope, uh, looking back on it, the the quickness that this has happened is is absolutely insane. I even had a an old friend who's uh, very successful in the oil and gas business. 
um, give me a call about possibly possibly purchasing a team. And he has some, you know, usually some of those more more wealthy people. They kind of run in the same circles, do the philanthropy together, and things like that. And he had a a, a couple guys that had some some inside uh, connections to some people that are on this level yeah. and, and uh, it just kind of, I was like, Oh, I heard about this MLP thing. I got, I got a guy researching it to, to see what the deal is yeah. if I might want to invest. So it's, it's crazy times. And I just, it might slow down at some point, but I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon, Robert. Yeah, no. And it's crazy because just having money is not enough to get one of these teams now. Oh no. Like you have to, you have to also bring either crazy celebrity or crazy influence. Like, you know, I know the betting courts were talking about getting a team, you know, maybe, this past year, and now it's like you know he's can we can we still get in there? It's like are are you LeBron? Yeah, who's, yeah. <laughs> are you Tom Brady? Yeah, who's on your team? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, who, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's on your uh, ownership team? Uh, Do you have twenty million followers you're bringing with you? Right, right. You know? and, and, like and, it's a big deal. And, and you know I, I don't know the exact specifics of the early on MLP and, and who wanted a team and whatever, but it was kind of. Yeah, you know, I, I don't. I don't. I think there was plenty of people that wanted one, but you just came up with a little cash. Maybe yep. you had two or three people, and you bought one. And you know, just two years later, it's or less than two years later, it's uh, uh, the money is almost irrelevant now. Yeah. And, and and you have to have something that's going to bring eyes to the league. And uh, yeah. I mean, that's just such a such a quick transition from from the beginning to where we are. So, and I'll be curious to see. You know, would these Big names. Obviously, we already had big names and big influence in MLP even prior to the announcement of LeBron, LeBron's investment group, as well as Tom Brady and Kim Kleister. Um, it'll be interesting for me to see how much of a push the ownership groups actually make into Major League Pickleball, because I think that's one gap that's been that's existed is you have these names like Gary Vaynerchuk and Brene Brown and James Blake and all these people. Um, and James does an amazing job tweeting about MLP and pickleball and, you know, trying to also bridge that gap between tennis mm -hmm, and pickleball mm -hmm. and legitimize it. And uh, it'll be curious for me. I'm very curious to see how it plays out over the next year in terms of getting these owners more involved and pushing the league and pushing the sport even more than they have. Because at this point, I don't think there's been a huge push in terms of the ownership group. Um making that push to really spread it to their audiences. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, so some of the owners are a little more involved in some of the other ones. And yep. it'll be cool to see if, you know, they get more involved, co uh, come to all the events, maybe even have, uh, you know, some setups in between tournaments to possibly practice and make it a little bit more official. I mean, yeah. this, this, I mean this upcoming tournament is the fourth MLP. I mean, yeah. that's it. It's the fourth MLP. That's, that's it. So, uh, yeah, and I think you're exactly right. I mean, the, the platforms these guys have are obviously absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, you know, I mean, we can uh, – some people, uh, just regular pickleball people in the community can do some things. But, I mean, you, you put a paddle in LeBron's hand and he does one tweet and that yeah. reaches 100,000 100, times more people yeah. than, than some someone that's just a pickleball player. So, Got to give a shout-out to uh, – and just in terms of talking about owners and who's involved, got to get a shout-out to – the Jackrabbits owner, your team's owner, Richie. Yeah. Um, and also my first team owner for BLQK. Um, mm -hmm. Was it last, just last year? Yeah, it was, it was last year. <laughs> it's weird. But um, I've always said, like, he, he does such a great job in terms of fostering a good team environment. Always gets a big house, an Airbnb for the teams, mm -hmm. um, which is really important. Like, that's what made it so fun, you know, is – being in a big Airbnb with your team and cooking meals together and just connecting. And, and I think, you know, the more we have owners kind of take ownership of that kind of responsibility and, and doing that for the players, it's just going to make the league and, and everything so much more special. So big shout out to Richie, cause he's, he's done an amazing job being a great team owner and creating that environment to where it's really, really fun to be a player. Oh, definitely. And, and, you know, that's, I mean, that's, that's important stuff. And we, we've talked about on previous podcasts about meeting in between the tournaments, having some team practices, yeah. having that team environment. I mean, I just, I just watched a great documentary, uh, the redeem team mm -hmm. on Netflix. And it was basically a bunch of superstars that lost, uh, as basketball became more of a worldwide sport, they lost in the Olympics, uh, because it was just a bunch of superstars that met two days before the tournament and yeah. played. And then they had a whole 
team atmosphere with the new team. Coach K uh, was the coach, and they had that camaraderie and that friendship uh, and those practices in between, and that's what took them to the next level. So I, I just don't see – I totally see MLP doing the same thing as it gets bigger and bigger. Yep. I hope so because that's, that's what makes it fun. Oh, definitely. So, it's yeah, it's, it's exciting times. Uh, it's great to see all this happen right when I'm going to be irrelevant uh, as a player. <laughs> but uh, Our practice session yesterday, Adam goes – well, this solidified my retirement. Yeah, right. Yeah, we, we had a practice session with uh, Gabe Tardio and Georgia Johnson, and, you know, they're just hitting the ball harder than me and, you know, li <laughs> lighting me up left and right. I'm, you know, hitting head-high blocks from the midcourt. I'm just like, dang, man, that, that commentary sounds really good next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adam's available for hire. Any commentary in the pickleball world, you hire this guy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just – it doesn't – it's just great, though. It's uh, it's to, to see the growth, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything yeah. else to say about it We're, besides for it's fantastic. We'll go into we'll go into more MLP kind of matchups previews for this uh, this coming Friday, which is kind of the first the first day of pool play. Um, got all the teams matchups lined up. We'll chat and go into kind of some analysis and previews of what that might look like going into day one. Uh, but before we get there. We had a big weekend at the Vegas Championships, the PPA mm -hmm. Vegas Championships. So let's let's jump into that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So actually, Rob, this was I, I watched pretty much everything, and I'll full disclosure. I watched I had, a lot. Too. I had a slight beer buzz through a lot of the matches and An uh, IPA. Uh, IPA, of course, of course, of course, IPA, and. Uh, you know, I actually had some fun uh, with some of the the chat junkies. <laughs> okay, just just so you guys know, Adam Stone is very, very, very hyped on the on the uh, the live stream chat. Oh, it's so funny. So I, I never, I mean, I obviously watch a ton of the matches, but I never really got on chat much before. Yeah. But I I, I had some fun interacting with some people on chat. And There's you, some characters. You guys say some really hilarious stuff, and I tell you what, those guys know a lot. They know they, a lot. They, know, they do. They know a lot of they what's do. going on. So I'll hop in there occasionally and be like, oh. They know a lot about my personal yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. How about that? I, for sure. For sure. So it, it was enjoy, uh, enjoyed watching the matches as always. I love yelling at the TV occasionally. Yeah. You know, it's, it's good times. Uh, but yes, there, there was a lot going on. And uh, well, we talked about that 75 player singles draw and what they ended up doing was a play in, right? Like a quali qualifier, basically early morning. I think mm -hmm. they started at 730 uh, singles day. And I don't know what they whittled it down to, but um, they... Uh, so, so basically it was, uh, so they had six, so it, I believe it was a 32 draw. Is that, no, no. Bigger, no. So, I think. So they had 16. They had 16 come over from that pool yeah. uh, that they played. I at think set. it was a 64 draw. So they, they, they slid them in. So they, they had, I think they had it set up and then they had the 16 players coming from that uh, play in bracket and then they slotted them in the draw and then started the draw yeah. at whatever, nine yep. or 10, uh, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's great. I mean, we've gone on a couple of rants with that. It might be a little outdated to rant on that, but to see an actual change happen yeah, it's great. Is, is good. And uh, and I think that that's just what's going to have to happen moving forward. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't start that off with a 128-person draw for a one-day <laughs> right. for for one event. For a one-day no, event, not right. possible. So. Right, so. Uh, I like how they handle that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, But if, if I'm paying an entry fee, whatever it is, 100-something, 100-plus bucks to, to play singles and then, I'm in a quality draw playing games to 15 and the, you know, and that I don't, I don't know necessarily if I feel like I'm getting my money's worth, but Hey, that's, that's on them to decide if they want to, if they want to shoot for a pro bracket or not, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think with it being so big and them already having a set bracket and then the play in, you know, I don't, I don't think it really matters. It's just, are those people willing to do yeah, that? Do so, you want to oh, pay right, it? Right, do it, right. So. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I do think maybe it. Since it was their first time to do it, they might have delayed the bracket and had yeah. some gaps because there there was, man, it was a long day in almost all the events in, in, in PPA Vegas. And I, a couple of people, I've seen a couple rants on amateur stuff. You know, we're talking about Didn't more. Didn't sound like it went well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and kind of forgetting to, to start the bracket and then big gaps in between matches. And, of course, these things happen. Uh, it, it's hard to, to run it perfectly smooth. But that was a long day out there for some of the pros, I think. Uh, I think J Dub and Deckel on Saturday night finished at 9:30 p.m. Yeah, with with, with J Dub having two finals the next day, so that's. And we're talking about like an 8 a.m. start, right? Was it 8 a.m. start? Uh, no, I start? think it was 10 a.m. Okay. I think it was 10 a.m. But he was the first match in mixed, and then he was the last match in singles. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's that's tough stuff. 9:30. Uh, I mean, it's a long day. It's Vegas, so I'm sure there's restaurants open, but some of the some of these tournament spots, you get done at 9:30, you might have to eat Wendy's or something. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, Which, no problem for you. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> 
<laughs> not a problem. I love a nice spicy chicken sandwich. I'll tell you what right now. So, uh, uh, but yeah, so, um, uh, let's get into a couple of the brackets. Yeah. Um, a couple of the things that, uh, that happened. So, uh, first off, why don't we just start off with the men's doubles? So, uh, kind of had that rivalry brewing, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, some of the, some of the earlier matches in the bracket, uh, Dylan Frazier and Zane Navratil with a very close match in the quarterfinals with the Johns brothers, uh, 12, 10 in the third. And I believe they had a solid lead in that third game Are of something that? around the nine to four, nine to five is what I heard. That's I did not one. see that though. Um, we watched it. We, we saw a little bit of the match footage from bad pickleball. Yeah. So, uh, who, cause I think some of the outer courts are the best matches. Oh, the, we always talk about that. Yeah. It's always like, talk about that. I wish we could see more of the first, second kind of third round matchups because those are the most intriguing typically for sure. And, uh, so I believe that is Johnny knack, uh, bad pickleball who does a lot of the outer court. So yep. if you guys want to check that out for, for some of those good outer court matches, you should definitely do so. And not only did the Johns brothers have a tight one in the round of 16, uh, Matt Wright and Riley Newman had a very close match with, uh, the singles boys, and maybe we can't call them the singles boys anymore yeah. if they're if they're, they're pushing Matt they're <laughs> if they're putting Matt and Ry pushing Matt and Riley yep. uh, to a third game. And I believe it was six or seven in yep. that third game, and a yep. very very tight first game that Matt and Riley won as well. So, uh, and that I mean, was that's with uh, Staxrud and Ignatowicz. Yo, did I not say their names? Yes, you said the singles boys. The singles boys. <laughs> How disrespectful. <laughs> Sorry, James. <laughs> Sorry, Fed. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. So I mean. We got to see our, our, our rivalry in the finals, but it was pretty close to not happening. So, yeah, uh, no, no, it's true. And, yeah, I mean, just to kind of go into, we, like, we watched the, through Bad Pickleball, we, they had the stream up for uh, the, the James Fed match with Matt and Riley. And just watching that, like, we, you know, we talked about this. It's like, it's the most I've seen, well, it's not, like, they're, they're playing very aggressive, mm -hmm. Matt and Riley. They're uh -huh. speeding up a lot of balls off the bounce. Um, in that particular matchup, um, James and Fed countered very well. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, they like the speed, they like pace, they're used to it, singles. Um, we talked about it. If, if it's very boring pickleball just to dink to one spot, mm -hmm. but Matt and Riley can dink all day, right? And not right. make a ton of errors. So if they just, if they played that back and they just dinked the whole, the whole time, didn't speed up, let James and let James and uh, Fed speed up at them, you know, world-class hands, world-class countering, mm -hmm. it would have been probably a three and three, four and four, something like that. Yeah. I mean, you know, but I, it's boring to play boring pickleball, <laughs> but it's effective. That certainly is effective. So, uh, you know, my favorite, favorite lines, a game of, it's a game of errors, not a game of winners, Robert. But yeah, I mean, who, who knows what really would have happened, but I, I think that that is exactly right. They, they weren't really willing to dink and, uh, James has some heavy hands over there. He does. So, we were talking about that. Yeah, too. he's got that nice extension on the backhand, and that ball that ball comes off his paddle with a lot of umph. So, yep. uh, yeah, a tight one there. I think they played a little bit more conservative uh, later on, and that that served them well. But yep. let's get to the finals. Uh, crazy first two games. Yeah, with, looks like it was going to be a steamroll. Yeah, I believe it was two and two. Yep. The first two games with uh, Riley and Matt just firing away. Matt looking really comfortable committing to that right side roll yeah. sliding over with the backhand that he has that is just so effective and of course uh, Riley with that pancake in the middle so it was working really well for them and it's it's hard to fault them for it because it was working so well but they did continue to push that pressure yeah. uh, Ben and Colin handled it much better and so maybe they held on to that all-out barrage a little too long in games three or four yeah. Uh, lost those, but uh, were able to come back in game five. So I uh, really can't fault them for that aggressive style after after it's worked so well for them. Yeah, it's, um, hard, it's hard to make that adjustment mid-match, and especially when it was so effective in the first two games. Right. 11-2, you're going to, of course, you're going to keep going. Yeah, yeah. so so uh, lots of people love talking about stale matchups that we see all the time, but when you have a rivalry like this and there's real back and yeah. forth, uh, seeing this same matchup, uh, I think, is is pretty exciting, not just a, oh, here we go again type yep. deal. So uh, that's great. Oh, I wanted to give a nice shout out too. I haven't I haven't seen him get a really solid win in a while. So my boy Jeff Warnick had oh, a yeah. really, really solid win in, the, I believe, the second or the third round with uh, Wes Burroughs. Yep. So shout out to you, Jeff. We're going to get you on the pod, talk about some old times one of these days, bud. And who do they, who do they take down? Uh, Dawson and Loom. That's so a, yes, that's right. That's a good win. Dawson and Loom, and uh, that is absolutely a good win. So uh, shout out to you, Jeff. 
Uh, let's move over. Anything else to say about that men's bracket, Robert? Men's bracket? No, no. All right. Like it. Yeah. So just touch on a well, few. Well, just uh, we talked about it before. Just in terms of the rivalry with Matt Riley and the Johns, um, while it was hot in Vegas, Vegas the ball still flies. Sure. Um, so I think fast condition. We're starting to see fast conditions favors Matt and Riley. Slower conditions favors the Johns because they can get more into the controlling the dink rallies, mm-hmm. controlling the points a little bit more. Algorithm. A little bit more chaos when the ball is flying and mm-hmm. Matt can pull the trigger on those forehands off the bounce and then slide into that backhand. Mm-hmm. Riley pinches middle and looks for the pancake. Like that's just. Fast, fast, fast conditions is going to favor Matt and Riley. So, you know, if you're looking at Vegas odds, I think, you know, those locations like Utah, Vegas, um, Palm, Palm Desert, that those kind of places are going to favor Matt and Riley. And, you know, the places like Florida and the slower conditions is going to favor the Johns. Yeah. And, and I would really love to see some numbers on players records in these conditions because yeah. I think it's a huge deal. Some people are, some people are super comfortable with that softball in Florida. Some people play at altitude at Salt Lake City yeah. with, with thin air also. Uh, yeah, so it's it's really important, and, and it's just it's so different. And you can see it in the types of points uh, that people are playing. So I, I have no doubt that there's a, a bunch of players out there that, that excel in certain conditions and struggle Absolutely. and struggle in others. I obviously don't have the data with me, but I would love to see some of that. And I think as pickleball continues to progress, especially the pro game, like we're going to start, and we're starting to see more – data and analytics and statistics. And I know there's a group um, that was posting some stuff on Twitter that's going to be at MLP. They did some stats for MLP last. I think they were, it was uh, probably not my favorite look at statistics. I think they had like kill shots. It almost felt like volleyball in a right, way. Right. You know, like you said, pickleball is not a game of winners. So kill shots, I think matters very little. For sure. Um, but as, as pickleball continues to progress, we're going to see really interesting analytics. And mm-hmm. I think there's just for all you entrepreneurs out there, there's a, there's, massive opportunity to get really good, um, provide really good statistics and analytics in pickleball because um, there's not much right now. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's unbelievably important because I think it's very easy to, to think something's working or, and, and it actually might not be working as well as you think and vice versa. Yeah. So I think that there's a lot of that going on. I hit this amazing shot to this area, but I, you know, it kind of gets lost in translate translation, those three that I missed. So I I think just seeing the numbers and knowing, oh, when I'm here and I'm going to this spot or I'm up against this player, uh, these things are working, they're not working. And it's just hard to compute all that and kind of compartmentalize it in your head with these situations. And if you had some data, it would be really cool. You know what I still want to see is like the, uh, you know, in golf when they have like the, the ball tracker, yes. the tail, Uh huh. I still want to see that in pickleball. Oh, that'd be I cool. I think, of, wouldn't it like, like off little attacks and even like drives where you're actually seeing Andy Roddick famous, famously said on Twitter that there's no spin in pickleball. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, okay, Andy. But like, <laughs> meanwhile, Pat Smith's hitting a forehand drive that goes over my head and lands in. Yeah, right. There's no, a little spin there's, in pickleball. Yeah, right. I remember Andy's pretty funny. I remember yeah. doing the thing with Agassi with him like four years yeah. ago. And he, you know, didn't play great or missed a couple shots or something. And yeah. he's walking back to the baseline. He goes, these people just who are no good at tennis just create games to be good at. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, Andy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, great. So it was pretty funny. Uh uh, but yeah, they're, they're in the spin. The spin is getting more and more. It seems like every day. So absolutely. Uh, okay, women's. We had uh, Paris Todd and Anna Bright with a fantastic run, beating. Uh, oh my! Adam, beating, you're, a, you're a hot commodity. Yeah, I guess so. El Paso, um, Texas. El Paso, <laughs> El Paso, Texas, uh, beating Lucy and Cali twelve ten in the third. Yeah. Really, really good match. Is that, a, is that the semifinal? Uh, the, yes, it was. Yeah. It was yeah. to get there. And then uh, we also had uh, – they beat Catherine and Leia as well yeah. pretty handily in a nice fiery match with – Bro, uh, you're Anna Bright number three picks. I know. Holding up pretty well. Holding up. I, got it. I know. That was a slightly controversial. Not as controversial as the Coop pick. But, uh, <laughs> but yes, Anna Bright. Uh, you can just see little tweaks in her game. Uh, a few less bad decisions, uh, yep. a few, a little bit more consistency on the soft stuff. And obviously she has the firepower. Yep. So, uh, I think, uh, well, two championship Sundays with two different partners, pretty, pretty impressive. Oh, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Irvin and Newman, uh, losing handily to the waters and they ended up, uh, I believe losing to Catherine and Leia in the back draw. Mm-hmm. Uh, the waters win in three in that championship Sunday. Uh, 
some really high quality points, close games, uh, I, even though they did win in three, I think maybe just a little bit, uh, Paris got ex- exploited a little bit. exposed a little bit in some of those situations, but I mean, she's, I mean, how can you, how, how can you falter? I mean, she's in a championship yeah. Sunday playing for yeah, yeah. a year or less. Uh, but I do think that that might have been the difference. Uh, maybe she played a little bit cleaner. They could have forced a game four or a game five. Oh, honestly, they were they were up relatively big in every game. Yeah, they just yeah, weren't able to yeah. close. So I think we're just looking at, you know, in that respect, it's typically just a little bit of a lack of experience and being in those big moments. So I think the more she's in those situations, sure. the, the more solid she's going to be. So. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, not, not a knock at all. I think, uh, I think she moves incredibly well laterally yeah. in singles and uh, possibly – just not as comfortable yet moving forward. And yeah. I think yeah. uh, with those with those big strokes and those big shots, as she gets more comfortable doing that and a few other things, watch out, you yeah. know, watch out. So, uh, yeah, so a lot of fun watching the, the, the women's, <laughs> the women's, <laughs> the, the women's stuff. Oh, and, the, and now I was going to mention that. So I, I got crossed up. I couldn't read my own writing there. But <laughs> the Todd Bright uh, and the Lucy Cali, I mean, that's, a lot of ladies like and like to yell on that court, and, and there's a lot of fist pumping and, and what and whatever else. Fire. Yes, so there's a lot of fire on that court, and uh, you know that's I mean that's just fun. I, I enjoy that, and uh, you know obviously there's always going to be talk about what's too far, but to yeah. see some fire and see some you know non robots out there just going through the motions yeah. is, is cool. Everyone has their own style, but uh, you know fire's cool. I, I, I don't mind it. No, at all. I mean come on, like we need personality yes, in this game. Yes, we talk yes. about it like. The, the more firepower, the more fiery they are, the better it is. Right. Yes, absolutely. So uh, you want people to hate you and love you. <laughs> you don't you. want everybody just to be like, meh, about you. Yeah. You right. Know? Right. No. People would either hate you or love you. I hear you. Uh, mixed doubles. We had Callie Smith, AJ Kohler uh, taking uh, Ben and Annalie to three games in the quarters, unable to seal the deal. Uh, Jay and Jesse lose fairly badly to Bright and Loom. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the exact was, scores, but was it was surprising. pretty routine, right, with their consistency. Uh, but, you know, Loom and Bright have some firepower, so I guess uh, on yeah. the same, at the same token, it's not terribly surprising. Uh, Waters and McGuffin. Uh, Lee Waters had a nice run in the back draw, ended up getting in the mix to, I'm not sure if it was the 5-6 spot or possibly the 4 spot. And the Newmans run through the back draw for bronze. Yeah. Didn't see anything really too close. Yeah. A lot of 15 eights and, and things like that on their run uh, to, to capture that bronze. Uh, anything you remember about Mixed? Uh, Mix is probably the one I watched the least. The of. least, yeah. yeah. Yeah, gotcha. So uh, women's singles, we had uh, Irina beating Davidze 1 and 8, which I think yeah, is a little surprising. That was a big surprise. Uh, Davidze has been doing uh, really well lately, great ground strokes, and, you know, old school. Uh, old school Irina getting a very nice win there, one and eight. Yeah, it's a great win. Uh, Catherine beats Paris, which obviously isn't surprising, but I think on paper a lot of people would surprising. Yeah, would have yeah, gave would have gave Paris the edge for sure. Yeah, and then uh, Davidze came back through and ended up getting the bronze. So yeah. we had uh, obviously Annalie Waters uh, just just too good and yep. uh, and 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 winning gold. Catherine with a nice job. Uh, I think it's been a little while since she's had a singles championship Sunday. Yep. So nice job by her, but. Uh, you know, obviously, Annalie just too much there. Uh, men's singles, we had uh, Fed beating Tyson 12-10 in the third. and it had to be a battle. Every game God, was tied, too. It wasn't on the stream. I, I would have really liked to see that one. That was in the quarterfinals. Um, uh, we had, let's see, Fed. Yes, we had Fed. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, JW. JW had a smooth, smooth, smooth ride to the finals. He yep. beat Dylan eight and six and then beat Fed five and four. Yeah. Which is very surprising. Uh, I know JW has beat Fed a bunch early on, but the ones have been very tight lately and yep. with Fed getting a couple of those. Uh, so to win five and four, pretty impressive for JW. Absolutely. Uh, James and Zane had to play fairly early mm-hmm. uh, and they were in the bottom half and, uh, you know, ended, neither one had a very deep run. Uh, Zane took that one and then. Then lost to Jocelyn in the next round. I believe that is correct. Yep. Yes, and we had Dylan running through and getting a bronze. Uh, you know, I got to say, Dylan's my favorite player right now. Very, uh, very versatile. Very versatile. I love me some some baby Dill. And then we also had uh, something to talk about here. Uh, we had Tyler Loom, Tyson, Zane Navratil, AJ Kohler, and Ryan Sherry pulling out of the back yeah. after they won their yeah. main draw match and not playing a single match in the back draw. And, and, pulling and, why, out. and why wouldn't you? There's, there's no, there's, there's no incentive to play the back. There's five hundred dollar bonus just for getting bronze. Yeah, you're you're winning a very small amount of money per match in the back draw, and there's not a lot of points either. No. So, 
these guys have, this is the first, this was the first day. They have two more events, possibly some championship Sunday. It makes no sense whatsoever. To kill yourself in the back to hopefully get a $500 bonus right, for to, bronze. Exactly. So uh, I feel like there needs to be a switch there to, to not have any incentive and have your top players just pulling out of a draw. Uh, I just, I just can't imagine that's a great situation. No. Um, and but you can't you can't fault the players because why risk beating up your body or getting hurt um, grinding through these backdrop matches for not a lot of upside? I don't know if it's actually five hundred bucks for that for the Vegas PPA championships, but it's it's, it's, it's maybe it could be it's more a, for that it's one. a it's a very low amount relatively speaking to the amount of work you have to put in. Sure. How long of a day it would be? Sure. So, but Baby Dill, yeah, I, he, he I, didn't care. Yeah, Baby Dill. I mean, Even more respect for him. Dude, that's my guy, man. <laughs> I, I, I like me some baby dude. We got to get him on the pod. Oh, he will be on the pod. I'm in, I'm in chat. Baby deal, you're coming. Yeah, I've been chatting with Cindy, okay. his mother. We yep. got some nice info. She's a, she's a lovely lady, yep. like the family. So I'm, I'm on board with old baby Dill. So uh, let's let's touch briefly on the APP, yep. Alabama. Yep. Uh, it's a tier two event. Uh, we talked many times about how a lot of the APP top players were playing this Vegas event, but still a tournament going on in, uh, how do you say it, Opelika? Opal, Opalaka. Opalaka? I think so. Okay. All right. I believe you. So we had uh, Yardo and Kenny, who I had never really heard. I believe I've seen, uh, I think it's Tito Yardo. I'd seen him on a draw before, but I had never seen him play. Yeah. They ended up uh, getting silver, losing in three to Rafa Hewitt and Julian Arnold, mm -hmm. and beating uh, Dow, uh, 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 Scarpa and Dow, which is a very solid team. That that's, we a good, that's a good W. Yeah, that we talked about last. Uh, that's, that, that is a Scarpa and Dow coming off a huge championship win at the uh, Savannah Golf Club. This uh, Dink for Pink. Dink for Pink. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, also, we had uh, Julian capturing gold and singles as okay. well. Uh, we had Georgia Johnson and Bobby Oshiro uh, capturing a gold and women's doubles. Uh, and if, <laughs> it was funny. We had, I'm not sure, Radzikowska. Mm. So I believe is a former pro tennis player okay. uh, at some at some level, and I believe she is in her early 40s. But she won the singles bracket and had a decent run in mixed. So uh, I, know, I, I know it's a little bit thinner field, but yep. there was still plenty of of solid players in this field. And yep. I saw something kind of funny in the women's draw. We had Megan Fudge missed her first round, oh, so yeah. she had to pull out, and then ends up. Can, playing the back draw and ends up getting second, so a silver. Oh, yeah. So that, that was kind of interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen that before where someone misses their first round and then comes back Must through. Must have just been late. Or... Yeah, I mean, she's got two kids. I mean, yeah. there could have been a lot of yeah, things yeah, that yeah, happened. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so that, that that was definitely interesting. And also, uh, about that PPA chat I wanted to mention, uh, so I got in a little back and forth with the, <laughs> with the gentleman from the Pacific Northwest. Okay. And I always love – some of the old stuff, yeah. you know, and he had been done some playing with, uh, with puppet master, uh, about a decade ago. And we talked about some stuff. And, uh, I remember LaVon major mm -hmm. who, uh, his, his wife, Tanya major also did a lot of, of pickleball playing back in the day. And we were talking about the Ernie. Yep. And so we got a little interesting story here. So there is a player named John Dixon, out of the Pacific Northwest, who was actually doing the Ernie before Ernie Perry. So okay. just a little fun fact there, Robert. Just a little... What's his name? Uh, John Dixon. So maybe we should be calling it the Dixon, not the Ernie. It doesn't... Not as catchy, but... Not as catchy. Uh, not as catchy, but just a little fun fact from the from the roots of the game there. Uh, and, I, and I always like that stuff. It's very interesting. Yeah. And if you guys haven't watched some of... I the believe, Puppet Master? I believe oh. it's Pickleball All-Stars yeah. on YouTube. But there is just some incredible... <laughs> incredible videos of puppet master you know beating up on four o's and like body bagging three yeah. fives and of course there's some good pro play on there as well but they're really funny and really entertaining and just uh some of the stuff that i watched you know that that first year Coming when i in. when i was just obsessed yeah. and, and, and trying to to watch every youtube video i could so uh the some of the best parts of those videos are actually the comment section Oh, you get on there. oh you I've never, master, no, you I've never master, seen that. Commenting on everybody's oh, comments. Oh, yes. Good stuff. Yes, that is. I remember him just destroying Mike Gates in the face and at a national. as hard as he could. As hard as he could. Because he, he used to do the pullback, and then he would do the soft stuff. Yeah. And then every now and then just he, would, he, crack it. He, would, he would try to bag you. No, no attempt to keep it in the court. Yeah. And just lit up Mike Gates in the face, who took it like a champ. You uh, know what that sounds like to me? What? Brandon French and James Ignatowicz. Oh, my God. That was... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was commentating that match. Brandon French does a step back and puts it right 
right on like the collarbone, uh, upper chest area of yeah. of uh, Ignatowicz, who also took it like a champ. Yeah. Uh, just kind of, uh, just kind of smiled and said, "Good shot, Brandon French." You know, is yeah. He's got some things to say at a lot of times. I like <laughs> Brandon. Keep doing you. Never, never stop. Yeah, you, yeah that's right. That's right. So, well, I got just on that note because we talked about like how James just kind of took that and like didn't get bothered by it. Where right. like if that happened to Colin or or maybe Kyle Colin, or maybe Colin Kyle, or Kyle it, it would be meltdown city. <laughs> uh, but James just took it like a champ, and then you know we were watching the James Fed and Matt Riley match, and there was jawing going on, and you know Matt doing Matt things and getting. And, you know, it's probably one of their, if not the first time playing Matt and Riley, right. one of the first. And, you know, for a lot of guys, it'd be intimidating. It'd be, it, you know, Matt starts chirping at you. You kind of back off a little bit. Uh-huh. And James handled it amazing. Like he, you know, gave it back and smiled, it smiled yeah. didn't get too bothered by it. So I just thought that was, that was really cool to see um, in terms of how to handle, you know, when somebody's trying to get under your skin. Textbook handling of Matt yep. Wright, who... Yep. Uh, the last several times I played them, it's not bothered me. But there was a couple of times at the beginning <laughs> where I was just like, you know, I'm going to kill you, Matt. The, I'm going to kill you. That's out or that's the spot. Keep going <laughs> yeah, there yeah, or yeah. just muttering something under his breath where yeah. you can hear it, yeah. you know, where you can hear it. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's just that that mental warfare going uh, going out there. Some people really frown upon it. And while it can be frustrating and slightly annoying at times, it's, it's just kind of part of the deal. I so. think it's great with pickleball because it's so different than tennis where you have so much space between the players, right? right? right. Like we're all in like, for sure. like within 10 feet of each yeah, other. For so sure. you hear everything, you can jaw and, a little bit. It's and, fun. And Matt's so funny. It just, He's so good at it. Yeah, he'll just be like lean over to Riley's be like hey let's go there every time every single time to that spot that we just went to you know like right where right where they can hear it you know yeah, and you're yeah, just like yeah. it's 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 pretty funny but uh, we need we need Matt Wright because you don't always hear it as just like a viewer we need Matt Wright mic'd up yeah just like it would be so many good clips of like what he said or we could get Matt Wright mic'd up at Somehow, when he doesn't know he's mic'd up, yes. that would be that ideal. Would, well, yes, yes. But I don't. I don't think Matt would even care. He would. Yeah, just, right. He, I, Matt would be Matt. Yeah, I think. I think you're right. I think you're right. And we're gonna play a little just to finish off here, Robert. About this recap, we're gonna play a little good cop, bad cop here. Okay. And I will be the good cop as always. Sure. Robert, tell me what you think about Lobgate. Oh, how 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 is it possibly how is it possible to be good cop here? Uh, I'll, I'll find a way. Okay. Yeah, I know you will. You were, you're very, uh, diplomatic with stuff, but Uh so if you don't know what he's referring to in terms of Lobgate, you've been living under a rock, (laughs) (laughs) but I'll just give you a brief recap. So, um, oftentimes when you play pickleball, the sun is out directly overhead. It's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. The sun will always be there. The sun's always going to rise. It's always going to set. Fact. When you play the game, sometimes you have to look into the sun. And Regina Franco Goldberg and Jana Gretschkina recognize this playing the waters. And they're like, hey, Lee's really struggling seeing the ball when I lob it. Let's lob because that's how you play sports. You find what somebody's struggling with. And then you do that over and over until they prove that they can handle it. Mm-hmm. So fantastic strategy. Um, and there, yeah, Lee, Lee had a meltdown. Lee was just freaking out. And I think one of the comments that she said as she physically got restrained by her 15-year-old daughter was, are you doing this because you can't beat us straight up? What is straight up? Playing the correct way. Like, there's no correct way to play pickleball. That's right. There's no correct way. You can do whatever you want. You can have two people back. You can. You, there, there's no set way to play this game. Well, Robert, I'm going to say one thing as the bad cop, and it'll be just this, and I'll sure. let you continue your rant. Yeah. Is I think that there's probably a lot of people that think the waters don't play the game the right way. Yeah. Yeah, it's fair. But that's ridiculous because yeah. there there's is no right there way. There is no right way. Continue your rant. No, thank you. That was a, that was a good interjection. Um, yeah, just it, it actually was hard for me to compute why she could be upset. Like I didn't like I didn't get it. Like what is she upset about? Because they're lobbing into the sun? Uh, well, like what? <laughs> like it, I still don't get it. Like it doesn't compute. Like there's no argument of is it fair or not what? That's not even a question that should be posed. Right. It's absolutely ludicrous and appalling that somebody could be upset 
about a strategy that your opponents have of lobbying. What? <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. And to see that behavior and to see her act like that on court and literally physically get held back by her 15 year old daughter. Cause she's freaking out so much about getting lobbed and whiffing, you know, figure it out. Like, you're not on that side the whole time. You switch sides in games. So you're not stuck over there. Um, just problem solve. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting mad at your opponents for doing a certain shot, which is absolute bonkers. <laughs> absolute bonkers. Like, it's, like, it was embarrassing to watch. And the crazy part to me is that it sounds like from people that were there is that she, she continued to rant when she got off court. She didn't feel like what she did was wrong. I get it. In the heat of the moment, you know, you're frustrated. You could say something, you can be upset, but afterwards you have to reflect and be like, okay, I was out of line. That was, that was bad behavior. That's not how I want to represent myself as a player, as a mom, as a person, but there was none of that. It was, it was off the court and still, still upset about what your opponents were doing. And to, to me, it's just appalling. I, I, I hated it. I thought it was gross behavior, not the way you should represent yourself or your family or your, you know, anything. So that that's my take on it. Uh, okay, no, that that is, that is a hot take, and uh, I don't think so. I think it's a very vanilla. Uh, take. Yeah, very vanilla take. Maybe you're right. Yeah, yeah maybe I, I misspoke there. Um, yeah, so I I would actually like to uh, to I mean this I mean tensions run high. This is a competitive game. You know, you're you're out there. Uh, you're put everyone's putting in work off the court now, so there's a lot riding on a lot of these tournaments. But I, what I would like to know, Rob, I exactly uh, like you mentioned at the end, is if there was some amount of man, I, I got frustrated in the moment that I, pr I probably went too far. I didn't, I didn't like the lobs. I think that's a little ridiculous. I wouldn't do that. But if she has had no thoughts of that and has just continued to think that what happened was right and what they did was wrong. Uh, I, I, that, that would be interesting to me to see exactly what, what her take would be on it now. Well, I think at this point, like if, if there was, if there was any level of personal responsibility that she would have already put out an Instagram post or a statement or anything, apologizing for the behavior, apologizing to Yana, apologizing to Regina. And, but to my knowledge, there hasn't been anything like that. And, you know, talking about the, talking about the live stream chat and everything, you know, they won the tournament, but I think she lost a lot of respect in in, in the pickleball community. For the community, I, yeah. I, yeah. From just kind of from the vibe everyone's had, I, I just I don't see how I can disagree with you there. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I know it's not the same situation, but I mean, I've I've been cramping on court multiple times. I've maybe threw up before the match and my opponents knew that. Well, I mean, are they yeah. not going to lob me? Are they not, yeah, are, not they, are, are, are they not going to, you know, adjust, tweak their strategy? Yeah. Being in, in good shape is part of the deal for this. Yeah. So if you're struggling, your opponent's going to give you a break or maybe play to your partner more because, because you're struggling. Uh, absolutely not. It could even be something like crazy wind. Or, yeah. I mean, the winds against me, they're attacking everything. They're not, they're yeah. not dinking once because the winds against them and they're falling in. I mean, th these are just things that you have to they're battle elements. through. They're, they're elements of the game. Yeah. It's, it's, and you want to exploit those things. You want to play the optimum strategy based on what all the elements are and all the variables that are going into that match. You want to exploit those. And your opponents are trying to exploit the same things. Exactly. And whoever does it best and whoever executes best is going to win. That's sports. It's sports. Yeah. So, yeah, that whole thing just kind of blows my mind still. Like, I still – it doesn't compute. <laughs> like it just doesn't compute. <laughs> we, we see. We see. So, uh, all right. No, that, that was good. We obviously needed to talk about that very, yeah. very important thing that happened at the tournament this last weekend. And just as a heads up, um, we're going to have Yana on. Yes, yeah, we're we're uh, we we they reached out to us about having Yana on to talk about. Yeah. Uh, her. we'd love to hear her take on it. Yeah, you know? just Cause... just just let her go, let let her say what she wants to say, yeah. and I think that that's great. Uh, awesome, bad cop job there, Rob. And I'm gonna do a little good cop now. Okay, okay. so I'm gonna do my good cop rant on the PPA commentators, the tennis channel commentators yeah. this yeah, yeah, weekend. Yeah. So there was man, they got they got blasted hard by the hardcore pickleball community. And I'm just not so sure that they should have. To be so it was John Michael Gamble, who's mm -hmm. former high level pro. I, I think he player. got to 14. Yeah, he was very good. Yeah, I think he got to 14 in the world. And yes. who who was the other commentator? I'm not. 
I, I don't think he was a tennis guy. He was just a commentary, yeah. like uh, just a uh, color color yep. guy that yep. uh, that doesn't have a, a but, big background in but tennis. Clear, clearly hadn't watched a ton of high level football <laughs> no. and came from the tennis world. Yeah. Probably tennis commentary. Sure. And there was, yeah. you know, some rackets instead of paddle said there's yep. a couple comments that were a little like, Whoa, he doesn't know that. I believe they, they called stacking. They compared stacking oh, to yeah. defensive line stunting <laughs> where they come or come around or whatever. Yeah. But let's be clear what's happening here to the hardcore community. It was a disaster. Yeah. Obviously we want, whoever that they have on there, Morgan, Dave, Dave Fleming, someone that knows the game and can give good insight. But this is on Tennis Channel. There, there is many more tennis players watching than pickleball oh, yeah. players. I mean, they what do they have, 50 million subscribers or something like that? Yeah. So I can't, I don't, of course, I don't know the numbers, but I can't imagine that there weren't a ridiculous amount of, of newbies that don't know much about it. Yep. They have someone that they can recognize from the sport that does a lot of the ten, tennis con, commentary and uh, Jan Michael Gamble. So overall, I think it was fine. I think it was fine for that audience. As we continue to be on Tennis Channel more and more and more and more players get comfortable with pickleball and know some things, then obviously we probably need a a pickleball player and a Tennis Channel person as we go forward. But for an introduction or their first time on the mic, uh, I think it was okay. And I don't want to have this exact same situation happen six months from now or a year from now. But in this exact situation, I, I, I'm okay with it. And I think some of the backlash was just a little too heavy uh, for what was happening out there. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I, we talked about that in the moment and it's like, yeah, no, I think even for me listening to these guys, it's, it's good for like, from my perspective, which is very biased, which is very ingrained into the pickleball world and everything that's going on to hear kind of outsiders that don't know the world and hear what their takes are on certain things and what, the, how they see stuff is really important. Like to understand to the market that's coming into pickleball, what are like some of the barriers? What are some of the blocks in terms of them watching it and understanding it and getting into it? So I, I liked hearing their perspective and I, you're right. I think, I think for the, for the new viewer, they need somebody relatable and not somebody that's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. using very pickleball specific terms where they right. don't understand what that means. Right. I, I, I love, I love Dave Fleming. He's one of my old, yep. oldest, oldest friends in the sport, big fan of Dave doing a great job over there on the PPA. But if you know, there's a unwinding the stack into a Cobra, yeah. uh, uh, Bert, Bert alert, yeah. you know, like, like what? Yeah. The chat, you know, Hey Shay or yeah. Odoth or whoever they know. Those exactly. are good <laughs> shout outs. There you go. Good shout outs. There you go. Uh, they, those, those guys know what's going on, but some, some 40 year old guy who's been playing, who's been playing tennis his whole life. And it's like, Oh, there's pickleball on tennis channel. I'll check it out. They, they don't know what that stuff is. Yeah. So uh, I think we need to look at the big picture here can't be like this down the line yeah. but for right now I, I think it's okay and uh you know some of the the harsh comments i get them i totally get them but i think it was probably a little overkill yeah no agreed i think it's uh you know it's not it's we're not the mass market you know right totally. i always look at that with pickleball is like you know people that watch pro pickleball is point one percent of the entire pickleball population that actually plays and right like we've got to cater to the mass market so they understand the game and so they can get into it and understand it more and and get more in grand like everybody else is you know that watches so i no totally agree i think that's a great good cop all right so bad cop rant good cop rant now before we get into mlp action let's take a look at this PPA roundup, Texas roundup in Dallas this weekend. <laughs> so, okay. I, so, so tell me, tell me what happened here. I, I, so this wasn't scheduled always. They kind of put yeah. it on the schedule late. Uh, I, I didn't even know that. So. Yeah. So I think when MLP announced their dates for the Columbus, Ohio uh, final MLP of the year, uh, the, the 14th to 16th of October, which mm-hmm. we're mm-hmm. rapidly approaching, uh, PPA put out something, you know, similar to the, how they did with the Newport. And I think the Manhattan beach was it Manhattan beach or LA. Regardless, so MLP scheduling their dates, PPA follows it up, kind of creating an event, mm-hmm. a un- new unique event that same weekend. Same thing happened with uh, this Frisco, Texas roundup. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're doing a big celebrity match, I believe, Thursday night, which is you got Dirk Nowitzki, you mm-hmm. got John Isner, you have Scotty Scheffler, world number one golfer. Um who else? Spieth and Romo. Spieth Jordan and, Spieth and Tony yeah, Romo. Yeah, so, so, I mean, we're talking, we're star-studded, like, R- legit. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Really. <laughs> you know, mostly all Dallas guys, you know, probably connected through Tom. 
Tom Dundon. So he's getting his buddies together for a, for an exhibition, which I'll watch because it's going to be inter- it's going to be interesting. And Hell I think yeah, these guys, it. you know, this versus like a Larry Fitzgerald, Michael Phelps, like who those guys couldn't play. Right. Uh, these guys can play. Right. Like I watched a couple of clips of them playing points and all super athletic, all good hand eye. Like they're all like decent players. So it'll be actually quite entertaining to watch. O- o- okay, reach in the kitchen. Okay, reach in the kitchen. <laughs> I mean, we're talking like, six ten guys. I mean, Scheffler. Golfer, he's way bigger. He's than like I four or five inches shorter than yeah. Dirk or yeah. something. I mean, he's like six five. I mean, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so so some of the draws here. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll go with the women's first. We have five teams signed up for women's, and five of the ten players do not have a five zero rating. Oi, that's so rough. yeah, that's that's pretty dang thin. And we and yeah. I t- I took a, lo- a look at the men's field. Uh, yesterday, and it has changed a lot. So yeah. I think the PPA was scrambling. I, I don't know this. I think they were scrambling a little bit, maybe even paid some money to get some players to yeah. come in because several teams have come in, and there's 14 men's teams, but the last four or five, I think there's a couple 4 rated yeah. players, and, and it gets pretty thin quick. It turns out that the top four or five men's teams are, are, are pretty solid, yeah. but it thins out real quick. And that's so. just the contracted teams? Oh, right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I didn't see Callan on there, and he, he popped in uh, at the last minute. So okay. I'm guessing they got him. I think they got uh, Wyatt Stone to come up from uh, the, the San yep. Antonio, Austin area, and, and a couple others uh, squeezed in there to kind of make a, make a round reason, out. Make, round out the roundup. Yeah, and, and uh, I, know, I know they were, um, yeah, I heard from a couple players that they were reaching out, trying to get them to show up for the tournament, um, and lower-level pro-type players. And offering free entry to the tournament. So yeah, it sounded like they were scrambling to put together some kind of some kind of product, right? But it's like, why don't you just make it the celebrity battle on so Thursday? Two days night? or something. Yeah. Or like yeah. two like have two days of exhibitions or something. Totally. Versus putting together like scrambling to find players for a pro bracket um, just seems like it's not gonna be a very good product. Yeah. So that definitely looks thin. Uh, exhibition looks very cool. No, uh, the exhibition tur- be tur- tournament looks looks pretty yeah. thin. Uh, yeah, so just just wanted to mention that, um, and uh, I guess I guess it's it feels right. It's time to get in this MLP action, Robert. Yeah, so we have um, some new look teams. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the fives we we brought on Ben Newell, so that'll be fun. I've never played with him, and um, you know, indoors plays fast, mm-hmm. so I think. I think that kind of fast pickleball, you know, talk about Julian Arnold or Rafa Hewitt, mm-hmm. those guys that like to drive, like to crash, shake and bake, like it's going to be very prevalent this weekend, just fast conditions. Yeah, uh, Georgia and Tardio. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, they, fly, let, let, letting that ball fly yesterday. They hit the ball pretty hard. Yeah, yeah they do, for they sure. They hit the ball pretty hard. Um, uh, yeah, no, de- de- definitely going to be interesting with that indoor dynamic. We yeah. talked about it a couple other times. So, uh, yeah, uh, and we even mentioned the Florida thing and the yeah. indoor outdoor is kind of similar. So yeah. uh, it matters more than people think. Yeah, oh, like, it, does. it really does. Like the speed of the ball, the way you can play, um, the level of you know drops with a softer ball versus a harder ball. Sure, like all of that matters so much and big time for pros. You know, oh, yeah. three fives out there. Whatever, you know, yep. it's probably not going to matter. We're just trying to make the ball in. But when you're talking about high-level pros that have all the shots, uh, these conditions can drastically alter the optimal shot selection yep. for sure. Yep. Who do you think – Who do you, so just looking at these teams, who do you think it favors the most? Um, just going to kind of look through the MLP roster here. We've got – I mean, I, the first thing that stands out is possibly BLQK with Rafa Hewitt. Yeah. You've got Paris Todd. Yeah. And who, who's their other woman? Is that Schneeman? Irina. No, it's Irina. Okay, yeah. Irina. All right. So Zayn, Rafa, Irina, Paris. I mean, I think it, it – yeah, with, with Schneeman, I, it would be even more yeah. than Irina, who's more yeah. of a control kind of feel the ball player. But even with the Florida Smash, who who picked up Schneeman, you have you have Michelle Esquivel, likes fast pace. Yes. Uh, J Dub, who can do both, do anything. Uh, right. Rhett Meyer likes to shake and bake. He yeah. comes from big good. tennis background, good heavy, hands, heavy hands, heavy hands. That new Selkirk. So yeah. I think the Smash lined up pretty well for the fast conditions. BLQK, like you mentioned. Um, 
even the bus where you have Stratman, Susanna Barr, Eric Lang, West Burroughs. West Burroughs, yep. Uh, West Burroughs. West Burroughs likes fast pickleball. <laughs> How do you think some of those points are, were this weekend with West Burroughs and Jeff Warnick? Oh, yeah. I would, yeah. <laughs> I want to see some yeah, of that. Yeah, lots of dinking, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Wes, I mean, he's got a heavy drive, closes yeah. well. I mean, that's Very athletic. That's the that's the best part of his game uh, from the little bit that I've seen of it. So the, the, these are these are big, big factors and yep. big differences uh, for, you know, for some, the two previous ones this year. Yeah. So, I even th- I even think like with the with our Newport champions, the ranchers, like, you know, maybe don't set up best for Jackie Kawamoto. Like That's she it. likes slow conditions, but you have Anna Bright who likes fast, you have DJ who can crush the ball, and you have Ignatowicz who likes fast pace too. Yeah. So definitely. I mean, they're set up for success in this condition in these conditions as well. Um hard eights are gonna be tough. You have Georgia Johnson, Sierra Gate and Leach, you have Andre Diascu and Kyle Yates. Mm-hmm. Um when you saw what Georgia can do to the ball. <laughs> yeah, she, she hits it hard. I <laughs> she mean, hits it hard. I mean, she does. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I love Gabe Tardio's game, but sorry, Gabe, Georgia hits it harder than you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I even, I think I told you yesterday, I think, you know, what's Georgia's 15? Yeah. I think, I think she's going to be the best woman in the world. Yeah, mate. I, I, the, the, the absolute firepower is, is next level. I she, think, you know, comparing, I, I would say Anna Lee's more athletic, moves better. No doubt. Um, all of that, but does not have the raw power that Georgia has. Georgia can flatten the ball out. She can hit it hard. She's getting so much better in the midcourt with the soft stuff. Right. Didn't miss, didn't miss a ton of dinks yesterday, which typically, like when I played her in the past, you'd get quite a few freebies off, mm-hmm. off missed dinks, and mm-hmm. her forehand dink looks solid. So I think, you know, I think we've seen how much she's developed in the last year. Right. And the trajectory is pretty significant, and I think it's going to continue that way. Yeah, definitely. But when, when that ball goes up above the shoulder, I mean, man, she really hits it. And yeah. I mean, if you, this is obviously picking nits with Anna Lee's game, who's is just ridiculously picking nits. I like that. It's just ridiculously good at everything. Is that how you, can you actually say it like that? You can say whatever you want to, Robert. If it feel, picking, if it, picking nits. If it feels wow, I like picking nits. If it feels right, I'm gonna say it. So, uh, so pick nits. but when that ball goes up high, Anna Lee still kind of strokes it. So yeah, it's kind uh, of that I mean, role. She, I mean, she's still hitting the crap yeah, out of the ball. Yeah. Obviously, it's a great shot. But when it goes up high to Georgia, it is it's a laser. It, yeah, it's 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 a little bit different uh, coming off that paddle. So just another example of just the raw power and the raw upside. And if that uh, you know materializes uh, with a little bit better decision making, yeah. uh, watch out. And watch the out. soft stuff and the resets and, and the and, the defensive type. Yeah, and obviously crazy age related upside. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> fifteen yeah. years old, and, and of course Anna Lee has that as decent, well. Decent practice partner with J Dub. Yeah, right. I would say so. And uh, yeah, I'm, I, I think that they're going to be playing quite a few tournaments together next year, J-Dub yep. and Georgia. So yep. yeah, watch out for her. Uh, the firepower and the offense is definitely there. Clean that up just a little bit, Georgia. And yeah. uh, you're already great. Uh, she will. She will. Yeah. And you, like I said, you're already great. Uh, take take that uh, another step forward. Uh, I, I, I could totally see it happening very soon. Yeah. Agreed. Let's go into just some of the some of the Friday early round matchups for pool play. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can just dig in a little bit. Mm-hmm. So you, I think your first match on on Championship Court Friday morning at eight thirty. Eight thirty with against BLQK. Yes. So we have Jack Rabbits, which is your team, and that's um, that's Maggie Brasha, Vivian David, you, and Hunter Johnson. Hunter Johnson, correct. Yes. Playing as we mentioned with BLQK, Irina, Paris, Zane, and Rafa. Mm-hmm. You know that's a tough that's a tough early round pool play match first thing in the morning. For sure. Um, well, what, what's it going to take for you guys to get a W there? Well, maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll just catch them with that because uh, I think on paper we're we're definitely a bit of the underdog yep. there. So maybe maybe that uh, kind of like that buy isn't always the best thing. Maybe we'll, yeah. maybe we'll catch them the early, early a round, bit. Right, right, a little bit, right, 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 for sure. Yep. But but obviously there's a lot of firepower there, and yep. uh, and and they kind of match up well too uh, in terms of. Uh, Zane has done a much better job of being solid uh, with the soft stuff, not really missing dinks, and yep. he's got that that got that powerful uh, lefty partner with Rafa Hewitt there over yep. over on the right side, and it's very similar with Irina and Paris. Yep. So I think that there's no doubt that Paris has you know more raw power and, and goes for her shots and releases on the ball more than Irina, who kind of likes to manipulate the ball, control. roll it, slice it, yep. cr- uh, the, yep. these kind of things. So so it, it, I mean. Uh, we definitely have our, 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 our work out, out yeah. for us because yeah. uh, they, they, they can play uh, both styles, I think, and, and they do mesh together well as a team, as we've seen in yep. some of the previous MLPs. So, Maggie and Viv are good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like they, like, that's what I love about MLP is like there's 
well, you have you might have some 60-40 favorites. You're not going to have many like 70-30 right. favorites. I mean, sorry, Hunter, but our girls are better than us. Yeah. So uh, Maggie's been playing really great yeah. uh, in some of these West Coast tournaments. Uh, so if she plays well and Vivian does her thing and – Hunter and myself just don't blow it, then I think we got a good squad, a yeah, pretty good and, squad. And, and I think, um, you know, you can have Viv on the right where she's comfortable and Maggie right. on the left where right. she's comfortable, exactly. which is a much better fit than it was pr prior, right? Right, and unfortunately, I've, I've you know, uh, I think I've played Maggie once, maybe twice, and I've never played with her, unfortunately. But uh, uh, she also is like you said very comfortable on the left and yep. i've done that with prof yep. and, and we're gonna we're gonna start we're gonna start off regular with sure. me on the left but if you know you have options we have options so I, i'm very comfortable playing the right and she likes the left so so we we do have some options there and i do think that we have a a, a solid singles team as well hunter very good at singles oh, yeah. vivian even though she doesn't play anymore very good yep. Uh, Maggie, and then I would say I'm probably around average in the field, even though yep. I don't play anymore. I, I can I you can, can slap forehand winners. I can slap some forehand winners. So uh, you know, I definitely don't think we're we're the best singles team out there, but I think we, I would say we're above average singles. I would team. agree. I would agree. So uh, I don't know if you're favored against BLQ. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, that, that might be one I, I would put ahead of us there in those rankings, as yep. they are a very very They're tough stacked. singles. It's, yeah. it's got to be number one or number two uh, gotta be. In, in the field. So no, I think it's got to be number one. Yeah, very excited uh, for, for that first round matchup. And let's let's hope that we come out hot letting it fly and, and they come out a little a little flat. And that would go a long way to, to helping us with that victory. Victory. Yep. yep. And then BLQK later in the day is taking on the Lions, which is Etta Wright, mm -hmm. Olivia McMillan, Thomas Wilson, Chuck Taylor. Mm -hmm. Um which on paper is probably one of the weaker teams in, uh, I, in the pool. I would say so. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I like Etta. Yeah. Uh, I like Etta. I like what I've seen from her. I think she's pretty solid out there. And, of course, uh, uh, Olivia, you know, I, I like little people. Yep. She's scrappy. She's Super fiery. Scrappy. Yep. Uh, Thomas Wilson has all that upside. But I do think that, that Chuck has dipped a little bit in some of his results. I yep. haven't seen a lot of the matches. Uh, had some really – handful of really solid tournaments about six months ago yep. and I think a couple of the results have dipped uh so uh what we'll, we'll see what, what what Chuck has for us uh, uh in store this weekend but he definitely has the ability and the firepower to play well totally so uh yeah there's like you said no you can't count anyone out and uh, there's just there's not with the rally scoring one game to 21 anything can happen oh, so sure. it's like it's like for a sure. lot of this gets thrown out the window yeah definitely so <laughs> yeah really? so uh, original format let's say it's a 70 30 on duper yeah it's got to it's got to it's got to it's got to squeeze tighter. down it does. Uh, be, uh given the format so Agreed. uh yeah so 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 definitely I, I would i would agree with you probably one of the weaker teams on paper and yep. i think that we are probably one of the weaker teams on paper as well but hey let's go man let's and then the, the other team in your pool is the florida smash so you have michelle esquivel mm -hmm. lacey schneeman which is a new pickup uh j-dub and rettenmeyer so yeah. also also a tough team like yeah. they're, they're gonna be good yeah definitely and uh yeah, Schneeman, uh, yeah, lots of lots of talent, uh, definitely some inconsistencies yeah. and some stuff that I've seen, but obviously that's gonna happen when you're when you're so new. For sure. So she she jumped in with the team as an alternate uh, last year, let it let it fly and played great. Uh, yep. I believe it was against you guys actually. Yeah, she lit me up head on. <laughs> she <laughs> yeah, did. Yeah, so uh, we'll see if she can carry that over or or maybe, you know, just kind of the oh, I'm on the team, uh, maybe she gets a little tense or a little yeah. tight, just yeah. knowing that, we'll, we'll just have to see. But she definitely has a lot of talent. And, uh, she does. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so uh, she, could, she, she can play. So next pool, um, we've got early round matchup of the, of the ranchers playing the chimeras. And so we have on the ranchers, we have, like we mentioned, Jackie Kawamoto, mm -hmm. Anna Bright, DJ Young, James Ignatowicz, defending champs, got to think they're going to come out of this pool on top definitely in top two spots but they're playing the chimeras which is andrea coop megan fudge gabe tardio daniel de la rosa mm -hmm. okay so all right so so first off i do believe that uh, i hope he's good to go but i do believe that dj young pulled out of the ppa vegas tournament this weekend got what for injury, I think I think it might have been his wrist. Okay. Uh, I maybe trickled down through the grapevine. I have not spoken to him, so I'm not positive on yep. that. But uh, I do know that he was scheduled to play that and did not. So we'll have to see how that all shakes out. But man, that team has they got that's a lot of firepower. It's a lot of firepower. It's a lot of firepower yeah. and one Kawamoto rock. So yeah. great team construction there. I think it, it matches up well for them in the uh, 
in the indoor play. Uh, I think Megan Fudge has been playing a lot better lately. Yeah, and she seems to be on the rise. Yeah, she seems to be on the rise, really solid, kind of, uh, you know, it's 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 not just the the soft game that takes a little while. It's a lot of it's the decision making. So so I, I think that uh, and that just takes reps. Yeah, it's just reps. It's court yeah. time. It's court yeah, it's time court is what time. it takes. Uh, some people get it a little quicker than others, but you got to be on the court and you got to have court time. Yeah. And she's been getting a lot of that lately. And I think it's uh, I think you can see that in some of her results as well. Yeah, I think so, I think Coop Coop Fudge is very formidable. Um, oh yeah. That's that's not a gimme against uh, you know for for Cal- for Jackie and Anna. That's not a that's not a gimme against Cooper Fudge. Oh no <laughs> like, no no close. no definitely that's definitely. a battle. Yeah, I, I agree completely. And then you have Gabe Tardio, who a uh, ton of upside, tons of upside. Loves to flip, loves to start yep. the fire, takes those big cuts, and and you know when he's catching it clean, he's tough. So, Especially in this format. Yeah right. Especially exactly. In this format, exactly. You get you catch fire a little bit. You go on a for sure. four or five point streak and. Off to the races. Yeah, for sure. And Especially it, with De La Rosa, too. Yeah, right. It's it's the same thing. We saw him on Tuesday Night Pickleball yep. last night. And, yeah, he might do something weird every now and then and, yep. and might might make a make an error here and there. But, but, but so some of those hands and some of those shots. And, and it's, talking about indoor pickleball. Yeah. Like, they I mean, like phew. the fast game. They can both drive really well. They can both crash, shake and bake. Like, yeah, that, it's, they'll, it, they'll be tough indoors. For sure. Ball comes off De La Rosa's paddle pretty special uh, when, <laughs> when, 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 when he hits it well. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean that. That's I think, and they have the. Uh, they can speak Espanol. That's, they, they got a little edge too. there. They it got does, a little edge there. A little help. comfort level to yep. speak a little Spanish. Just get on the same page. Get that vibe yep. going. Uh, I think that that's definitely something that matters a little bit. So. Uh, and then outside of uh, the Camaras, you have also the ranchers playing the bus later in the day, which the bus is Lauren Stratman, Susanna Bar. Eric Lang, West Burroughs. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a tough team. Yeah. yeah that's, no. that's going to be a tough bracket, actually. Yeah, no weak um, links there. Yeah, so, and then you have the last team running out this pool is the Mad Drops, which is Lee Whitwell, Mary Brasha, AJ Kohler, and Julian Arnold. Right, you know, that's the... We're uh, talking top-tier men's team. Uh-huh. Um, not as strong on the female side, but really, really tough on the men's side. Uh, absolutely. And both great mixed players. So yes, right, right. I think right. They, they might struggle to take some of those um, women's gender matches, but going to be very, very strong in men's, going to be very strong in mixed. And we'll see if the, you know, what we talked about before is usually mixed is dependent on how well your female plays. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas in here, we have two really, really strong mixed players. And... Maybe not as strong on the on the female side. So it's I think we talked about can will will the guys be able to do enough to overcome that, or will they start overplaying and you know mixes a tough balance. We always talk about it that line of being aggressive but not overly aggressive and sure. overplaying and getting out of position is a very tough line to to toe. Uh-huh. So it's just gonna I think it, I think that's the big question mark for me for me is. How like are they able to be successful in mixed? I think their whole pool play is dependent on that. I, I agree completely. And we have AJ has played with Lee several times. Yeah. So I would imagine and that they will stick together. Not Mary Brasha. He'll probably play with Mary. You think? Oh, and he's he has played with Mary as well. That's that, right. They that's played right. together that's last. Right. That's right. So he, so he's played with both. So yeah, we'll we'll see what, what they go with there. But I do agree that. And the thing is, is like AJ is one of the best crab walkers. He can, yeah. he can take a lot of court, and yeah. Julian's pretty small, but one of the best movers out there. So yep. he, he he can take the court as well. So I think mixed if they if they get good chemistry on their two mixed teams, that can be a very very tough, super team. dangerous. Yeah, we're not and we're not. It's not like Lee and Mary can't win. No, they they're, absolutely they're just can. they're just a little bit uh, lower, I think, on paper than some of those other women's teams. Yeah, but if that, we're talking Lee and Mary versus Jackie and Anna. Yeah, that's not, like like on paper. That's that's rough. Yeah, that's rough. Same, right. Yeah, and same with um, honestly, same with Stratman and Barr. You got to favor them over. Yeah, definitely. Lee and Mary as well. Yeah, definitely. But there, that's it's an interesting dynamic, and uh, I think we talked about that after the trade happened. That. That's, it's two studly guys, yeah. and, and we'll see how that yeah. works. So because we've seen the two number one females right. with the ranchers, what that does exactly. So well, it's just another. I think this is the most extreme version that we've seen of yep. it with the really, really, uh, uh, you know, high end guys, and then the solid girls, and yep. we'll, we'll see how that team that team uh, chemistry plays out. Absolutely. Final pool. We've got the hard eights versus clean. Early in the day. Okay. So hard eights is Georgia Johnson, Sierra Gain Leach, Andre Dayescu, Kyle Yates mm-hmm. going against Team Clean, which is um, Maggie Ramenzi, uh, Regina 
Goldberg, Deckel, Barr, and Federico Stackstrud. And Federico Stackstrud, gotcha. Which, that'll be an interesting team, right? Because, you know, we saw Fed play with James at the PPA Vegas, and he seems pretty comfortable on the right. Mm-hmm. Um, made some made some random errors here and there, as one does coming into the men's game. Yeah. Um, but I'll be really curious to see how they do in men's. I, I have a feeling Deckel's going to try to be taking 80% of the court. <laughs> I would I would think so. Um, but on the women's side, probably two, number two females, right? Definitely. So it's going to be tough on that end. Definitely. And I do believe that uh, uh, Maggie Reminzi, that she's on that team, yep. right? Maggie Reminzi, yep, yep, yep. I, I think that she didn't play her best pickleball this past weekend in Alabama. Yep. So hopefully she can... Uh, you know, put that in the rearview mirror and, and stay focused this weekend because, you know, everyone has bad tournaments here and there. So, totally. uh, so yes, I, I agree with you completely at that with uh, Regina and Maggie. And then it'll be, it'll be real interesting uh, how, how uh, uh, the dynamic between Deckel and Fed, and I do think it will be lots of Deckel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what was the other team? The Hard Eight. So that so the Hard Eight. So yeah, so, Georgia, Sierra Gay and Leach, Andre and Kyle. Which, right. That's a tough men's team. That's a real. That, that's a really solid team. And obviously, it's very easy to to pick out the uh, the person who ha- is less established of those four in yep. Sierra Gay and Leach. And if she plays well, which I do think that she can, I think that could be a very tough team because. Andre and Kyle comfortable with each other oh, yeah. and fit together nicely. Yep, absolutely. Because uh, I mean, Kyle I, on the right. Andre I, on the I mean, left. I just I just think Kyle's better on the right. I agree. And, and and I think he's legitimately very good on the right. So with that matchup there, Andre playing some better mixed as well, and then you could all and of course Georgia can always get hot. Watch out. Yeah. Watch out if Sierra plays even reasonably. Uh, no, and I think Sierra. I think Sierra's underrated. I think she, yeah, she's got a good game. I remember when I played her really early on. She hadn't played much. Um, you know, I was doing my typical mixed like flip straight on, mm-hmm. and she was. And most people aren't on it the first time I play them. Um, at least a little uncomfortable. Yeah. And she handled everything. I was getting so <laughs> mad. I was like, how are you on all of this stuff? Right. Like right. her hand, her hands are good. Yes. Yes. I mean, we'll have random errors here and there, but like she's, she's a good player. She's mm-hmm. a really good player. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad she got picked up because she deserves to be playing in my opinion. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, so we have that. We have also um, ATX pickleballers in this group. And we don't, Let's see. Yep. ATX Pickleballers, five is my team. So my team is Simone, Lena, myself, Ben Newell, mm-hmm. who is a new pickup for us. Um, we thought Ben fit pretty well in terms of being a lefty. Uh, Lena is very comfortable on the left side mm-hmm. in mix, especially not so much on the right. So that was a big deal and a big reason we wanted to get a lefty. I think, you yeah. know, she played with Pablo uh-huh. and they did very, very well. Didn't lose a match. Oh yeah. It so was crazy. she likes being on that left and mixed. Yeah. And, uh, let's just make sure she doesn't hit Simone's hand with her paddle. Like, well, where I was that? that? Chicago. Yeah, I think, I think it that. was in Chicago and it was, yeah, it was an issue. She yeah. whacked, she whacked her pretty good. Um, but, but I think, I think Ben Newell, uh, with the indoor, cause he, he filled in yeah. for me. And the when when I hurt my calf, yep. he filled in for the in mad Austin. drops uh, in Austin, right yep. at Dreamland. Yep. And uh, you know, I mean, I I, I, th- I thought he did fine, and that is his style. Yep. He, he he's I wouldn't say he's uncomfortable dinking, but, but he he, he, he wants to fire yep. away. He wants to he wants to put that pressure. Great mover. Oh yeah, re- re- really great mover. Yep. Some fantastic footwork, even though you know he's not a bi- uh, very big guy. Yep. Uh, so I, I think it could be fine. And what what was the other team? Sorry, and ATX. Pickleballers, okay, which yeah. is Jade Kawamoto, Sarah Sarah Ansbury, Baby Dill, and Pablo Tejas. Okay, now it's a thing. It's probably a similar the the male version of Maggie Reminzi. I don't think Pablo had his best tournament in no. Alabama this yeah. past weekend, yeah. but he was on fire at that first MLP. Oh yeah, I mean the, he played unreal. I mean it was ridiculous. Yep. Just winner, 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 and he was speed it up, clean it up. They just, were they were ugh. beating people. Like Badly. rally scoring's meant to be tight the whole way through. I mean, they like they were beating people twenty one eight, twenty one yeah. ten. Yeah, like it was like not even very competitive mix matches. For sure, for like, sure. So, so when he's on and Oof. he's and he's indoor. swinging away and comfortable and moving, he's he's good. Indoor, yeah, indoor. indoor, indoor. Like it's gonna. I think that's the biggest variable this weekend is the indoor versus for outdoor sure. in the past. Like it's sure. it's gonna be different pickleball. It's gonna be fast pickleball. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It'll and be uh, fun to watch if if you're a viewer. Yeah, I agree completely. So last team here is that we haven't talked about is we have the clean heart eights. So we talk about the heart eights. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, we did ATX. That's it. That's it. That's it. Mm. And that's that's pool play. And um, so the only team that we don't play um, in is the hard eights on that first day. So we'll have the hard eights on Saturday. Okay, gotcha. Um, so it, it's two rounds. So you play on two Friday. rounds on Friday. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you'll play two of the teams in your pool. You'll play the third Saturday morning. Um, and they've changed the they've changed the scheduling a little bit to where you have two on Friday. I think we play at 1.30 p.m. and then 7 p.m., okay. which I like the later start, Okay, um, especially adjusting from Hawaii time. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and then you have one Saturday morning, and then I think you mentioned the rest of the day, Saturday is Saturday afternoon is clear. I believe that's correct, and yes. And then Sunday morning, you'll have the quarterfinals, uh-huh. and then you'll go to the semifinals, and finals are kind of pretty close back-to-back Sunday evening. Mm-hmm. Which I like that format because you have you'll have everybody there watching the semis. You'll have your two winning teams prepare to play in the next hour after that. But you have a great environment for the semis and finals with everybody there. Everybody the, the anticipation and the tension building around that. Like I think that's gonna be a really, really special time. Um, that Sunday evening where you have the semis and then the finals. That's I, cool. I like how they did that. Yeah, I like the no big gap. Yeah. The, the, the big gap, it's, you know, it's like, oh, are we going to stay? Are we going to go? Hours. We're casual viewers. Are we going to stay? Are we going to go? We'll yeah. go. But if it's boom, boom, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're going to stay. The vibe, the energy will be there. It won't, totally. it won't dip and have to come back. Yeah. It'll just continue. It'll, it'll just make, continue. actually, I think it'll make the semis more exciting because everybody's going to be there for right, it. Right, right. Whereas exactly. in the semis, we were in the semis in, in Newport and it wasn't very crowded actually. Right. It wasn't like, there wasn't a big crowd because right. it was morning uh-huh. and then right there's that big gap in the middle of the day where you know people had to come back for the finals at night mm-hmm. so i i really like that format and how they did that scheduling so well done mlp um that's yeah so that's that's mlp um this upcoming weekend it's going to be really cool to see this is the final this is the final mlp with these teams as we know them um everything after this weekend scratched starts starts anew We'll have four new owners mm-hmm. come in, four new teams, expanding the league from 12 teams to 16 teams. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be a completely new redraft at the end of this year, which will determine all the teams for next year. It's going to be, it's going to be 32 men, 32 women, and it's going to be a lot of fun next year. Yeah, six spot. I mean, what one stop, three stops, and now six stops next year. Yep. So uh, growing uh, with teams, growing with amount of amount of tournaments and growing with the with the pro player pool as well and so growing with the team owners and their influence like it's on a this is a rocket ship i like mlp i like mlp too and, <laughs> and from a player's perspective man com- comparing mlp to uh playing a ppa or playing an app like there's there's no other place where i feel like i'm actually being treated like a pro athlete yeah that's you know that's that's for sure and i and as as uh, being injured and common, commentating that first one this year, I brought this up a couple times. You could just see the tension. Like you could see players are taking deep breaths oh, before yeah. they return. Yeah. Like the, it is it is intense. It's different than that kind of more drawn out regular tournament. It's intense. It's team format. Every point is 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 bigger than, than that regular format, yeah. and you can see it on the players' faces, yeah. and, and you can see that tension and that it's it's palpable and it's very cool. It is. You're playing for you're playing for real money in yeah. this tournament. Yeah. Which also tensions run a little higher. Mm-hmm. Tensions run higher. A little bit more drama, as we saw at MLP Newport. Like people like money. People like money, and, <laughs> and Adam, when money's involved in games, oh man. People they're, are good at things. They're good at things. They're yeah. very good at yeah. things. Uh, yes, people are. So we are going to adjust, not adjust, but we are going to start throwing in more guest episodes. Mm-hmm. And hopefully this weekend we're able to grab a couple. I know we want to talk to Yana, mm-hmm. um, get her take on the whole care and water situa- situation. <laughs> and then um, i got a little list here. We want to get we want to get Dylan Frazier on this podcast. Um, some guys that, um, that, we know, that we know really well that we find – funny and entertaining mm-hmm. that it doesn't always come across to the casual viewer. You sure, know what I mean? So sure. I think we'll do a really good job at like pulling personality of these guys, yes. which normally doesn't come out or you're not able to see it or get to know that person or that player. Right. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun with Dylan. We're going to get J-Dub on here. Um, we're going to get Riley Newman, hopefully. Hopefully. I got to talk to him. Uh-huh. Uh, Matt Wright's already agreed. He's going to be on. We want to get Ignatowicz, so, who oh, I find to be very funny. Oh, yeah. I think Ignatowicz is great from the little little bit yeah. I've, 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 I've talked to him. So I think he would be 
very entertaining. Yeah, to be agreed, honest. agreed. Anna Bright, hopefully that she'd be great. And then, um, as you mentioned before, you know, former junior Wimbledon champ Noah Rubin, who's mm-hmm. who's committed to coming into the game, and mm-hmm. um, you know, the reason he mentioned you know leaving pro tennis is size. He's five mm-hmm. nine, so mm-hmm. he's like, I'm just not big enough for tennis, right? But I am for pickleball. But Noah, buddy. Size does matter in pickleball. <laughs> it certainly does. Size matters in most, most things. In most things. It, <laughs> it, it really does. And I think I saw someone make a, a post or a message. It obviously matters, but maybe a little bit less yeah. in pickleball. Yeah. And I think that that's probably fair. No, I think, I think I, a lot less, I think less, that's actually. probably fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think, you know, as we see with most tennis players converting, especially somebody, I think you told me the quote of when Noah was 15, that John McEnroe, because he trained at John yes. McEnroe Tennis Wh- Academy Wikipedia in New page, York. Yeah. John McEnroe said Noah Rubin is the most talented player he's come across at that age. Yes, correct. So, so we're I mean, talking we're talking about like world class skills and ability wise. Right, and I and I don't particularly know this, but yeah. Johnny Mac, hell of a servant volleyer, all yeah. court game. Yeah. I have a feeling if he's made that statement that Ruben just wasn't a rough and a dog grinder, yeah. a rough and a dog grinder, 10 feet behind the baseline. He, he, he had good feel. He can manipulate the ball. He could do some yep. different things. And that is what I think obviously is going to translate better. So hundred percent, cause I can remember plenty of the guys that I coached tennis yep. that. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about the comparison between Noah and a Sam query who Sam sure. said, Sam said three months playing pickleball, he'd be top 10 in the world in mm-hmm. doubles. Mm-hmm. I think the difference between like a Sam, which, you know, height's a big deal because you get reach mm-hmm. in pickleball, which mm-hmm. is very important. Um, but oddly enough, most of these big guys don't know how to use it properly. Right. You know, it's one of the weirdest things. They're letting, they're letting balls bounce to the kitchen line, right. which is like, right. why should you ever let that yeah, bounce? Yeah, seriously. But they do. Um, so I, I think if we're looking at Noah versus Sam in terms of who's going to get better results and in the same amount of time, call it six months, call it a year, I would put my money on Noah. Mm-hmm. One, I think he's going to take it more seriously. Mm-hmm. Sam's had a storied tennis career, right. made $14, $15 million on tour, right. um, got to world number 11. I think Noah got to world number 125, something like that in singles. Um, I think Sam's going to be a little less hungry. Mm-hmm. Sam's made some more money in his career than <laughs> Noah has. Sure. Noah seems like he's a worker. He mm-hmm. seems like good work ethic. He's going to take it seriously. And I think that's that's going to make all the difference. Right. And if I remember correctly, I, I have not been watching much tennis I watched a lot of tennis in my early life, not so much the last decade or so, but yeah. Quarry, Quarry was a big game guy, big serve, yeah. rocket, rocketed yeah. ground strokes, you know, that, that kind of style. Not that he not didn't, the all court game. Yeah. Really, not though. that he, you know, didn't have volleys, you know, and, hands, whatever, yeah, but yeah, that, yeah. that was more his style yeah. if I remember correctly. So, uh, you know, uh, it all translates well, but I, I do think that that, that touch feel all court game is definitely what you would more want to come from than that. Uh, one, serve, one, 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 one thirty-five slap a flat forehand yeah. type 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 uh, uh, ability in tennis, which you know a lot of people are very good at that in tennis. Yeah, uh, no, it's a big deal in tennis. Yeah, so uh, very very cool. Lots of cool stuff lined up, and I, yeah. I like the idea of getting some guests on. Um, yeah. a little mix of of some veterans and, and some of the new players that were that uh, some of the uh, you know the pickleball junkies don't don't know quite as much about. So uh, I think I think it's I think things are looking up. I think it feels right. It does feel right, and I think it feels right to end probably right here, Robert. Eh? Agreed. Agreed. Night 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 night. Because you know why? Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary. Yeah.